Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. We are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Don't Go In There by Road to Infamy Games. Don't Go In There is a haunted, spooky house themed game. It's a push your luck game, sort of, in which you are placing your workers on different rooms inside this haunted house and you want to go so far uh, to get the first pick of the cards in order to complete the sets that you're building, but you don't want to collect too many ghosts. And if you go too far, you won't protect yourself from the ghosts that come as a result of the dice rolls. A uh, little bit to go with this game. I'll explain it down below. The box is pretty cool and, and is actually a dice tower. Uh, yeah, here, we'll show it to you real quick. That's There's mm -hmm. a dice tower and there's components inside this as well, but uh, magnetic clip here as well. Uh, let's show you how it works down below, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here's Don't Go In There from Road to Infamy Games. Let me show you guys how this dice rolling set collection game works, in which you play as a group of kids who are sneaking. Here's the kids themselves. They are uh, sneaking into the haunted house here uh, and trying to collect different things such as a black cat or a clock and uh, you are trying to do so at your own peril because you are going to be taking curses. Uh, the number right here shows you how many curses this cat is worth and you will also be collecting ghosts. We have ghosts in ones and twos and fives. And you want to try to avoid taking the most ghosts in this game because then you will take extra curses. Real quick, this is the token sesame token tray holder. Uh, if you'd like more information on it, check out the link down below in the description of this video. And there is a discount code to use as well. Anyhow, in this game, you are, as I said, going through the haunted house. And the box here is going to double as a dice tower. You're going to unfold it here you are going to uh, have a different or uh, have a tray here that actually holds all the components when you are storing the game but you will put this tray in the box and it will double as a dice tower and so you are going to be rolling dice this way i'm going to set this off the off to the side for right now and explain to you how the game works now you're gonna have three different rooms that you will be exploring and each room is going to hold three cards. Now there are several different suits to use in the game and you are going to only use a number of suits depending on the number of players in the game. And so you're not gonna use every suit in this game. So there is some replayability for that purpose as you can play with different suits every time you play. I'll show you what the different suits are in the game though. You have cats and the cats tell you that at game end, if you end with nine or fewer ghosts, you get to dispel all but one cat. Now dispel means that you get to turn these cards over the ones that you've collected, and you're not going to count up the curses that you would gain from those, those cards. And that's a good thing. You don't want the curses because whoever has the most curses is going to lose. Whoever has the fewest is going to win. That is ultimately how you win the game. There are masks, and masks say pass one ghost per mask in your set to the rival on your right. So the more masks you gain, the more ghosts you get to pass to the person on your right. However, you are taking curses by taking masks. So there's a little give and take there. The clock here says the first to eight or more curses on clocks dispels two clocks. This would give you four, so you would only need four more to be able to get to eight. And this is a race because it's the first player to eight or more. A doll. So this doll says dispel set of dolls whose curses add up to exactly six. Here's one. So you want exactly five more to be able to dispel that entire set of dolls. Tome. If you collect two tomes, you get to dispel all other cards of one type, not tomes. So this would be a good thing to get rid of something else. Twin. Dispel two identical twins. Now, the twins are going to have different artwork showing a different uh, twin on here. You want the one that exactly looks like this to be able to, to dispel both of them. 
amulet at game end dispel an amulet with two curses now this one has one so you'd want to try to find one that has two so you could dispel it ring if you can get four rings you can dispel four rings holy water if you can get a pair you can discard half of your ghosts rounded down mirror take a ghost when you take this car if you can get three mirrors you can dispel three mirrors Music box at game end. Whoever has the most curses on music boxes gets to dispel two music boxes. And then lastly, portrait at game end. If you can have a pair of portraits, you can dispel one portrait. So those are our different suits, and uh, you are going to be trying to make collections of those seats, suits, and they're going to be scattered in the three rooms. Now, how this game works, you are going to use one of your meeples on your turn to place in one of the circles in any one of the three rooms. Now, the three rooms are going to have four spots for meeples. The one that is closest to the top of the room is going to be first choice. The, the person who places their meeple here, they will get first choice of the three cards. Uh, if you place here, you're not going to get first choice if somebody goes there but you will get a flashlight to protect you against the ghost roll. We'll explain that here in a second. Going here gets you two flashlights, and then going here gets you three flashlights, but this room is special, the nursery. You get to get rid of one of your ghosts if you go here. However, going here ensures that you are going to get last pick from the three cards that are available. The other rooms work a little bit differently. The hallway is going to let the player who resolves it change one die result from the ghost roll. And the secret passage here says that uh, this card, when it's dealt out, is actually going to be face down. So actually, this mask here, we would put face down when we deal that card out. And when you place a meeple anywhere on the secret passage, you get to peek at what the face down card is. So uh, on my turn, I might uh, go right here, for instance, and then somebody else will go. Maybe they go there, and then another player says, well, I'm going to go here. And uh, then it's back to me. And maybe I say, well, I'm going to go here. I want to make sure I get first pick at the hallway. Anytime a third meeple has been placed in a room, then we're going to resolve that particular room. And whoever it was that placed the third meeple, they are going to take this token to signify that they have triggered this room to be resolved. It's also going to denote that starting with the next player after this room is resolved, uh, the player to uh, my left would get to be the next person to place their meeple. Now, how do you resolve a room? Well, that's going to be very simple. You are going to get the dice tower out, and you are going to roll a number of dice. Now, let's see where I can put this. We'll put it right here. And the number of dice you roll is dependent on the cards that are up for grabs in this particular room. So here are the three cards, and we look at the, the number of dice in the top corner. So this set right here has six dice, which is as many as you can possibly roll on a set of three cards. So these cards are going to be uh, highly um, dangerous. Because on these dice, you're going to have half the sides that are blank and half the sides that have a ghost. You do not want ghosts. So the player who triggered by placing the third meeple, they are going to resolve this room and they will roll the dice and you will look and see how many ghosts you got. And so in this particular case, it looks like I have four ghosts and two blanks. So four ghosts. So looking back at our arrangement of our meeples here the person who places right here they don't get any protection from those ghosts so they will have to take four ghosts from the supply and with these ghosts you are going to actually put them behind your screen here so that you conceal how many ghosts you have and nobody is going to know and that way it's a little bit of hidden information because you don't want to have the most ghosts Whoever has the most ghosts at the end of the game, they are going to gain one curse for every two ghosts that they have. And again, the winner is the person who has the fewest curses. And by curse, this is what I mean right here. Now, if uh, I placed here, I would have one flashlight. And what one flashlight lets me do, it lets me negate one of the ghosts that come up on the dice. So back to our roll here, we had four ghosts. I can negate one of them. So I only have to take three ghosts 
to resolve this meeple, and then I would get to pick a card. And then the last player, they placed here, so they have two flashlights. They get to negate two ghosts, and they are only taking two uh, ghosts from the leftover die result. And they would get to take the third card from this, this uh, room right here. So once we have done that, then players will take back their meeples, and we will flip over the room to reveal the other room that's on the back side here. So we have the basement, and this one says the player resolving the basement may re-roll the dice once. And uh, you would continue doing this. The back side of this room, when it resolves, is the library. And you're going to arrange the cards based on the curse value, putting the lowest one here and the highest one here. And whenever you take this particular card, you have to take an extra ghost to take it. If you take this particular card, you get rid of a ghost, and that's because you don't want curses. You want lower curse-valued cards, and so to take the high cursed value card, you actually get rid of a ghost in this particular room, the library. And then again, on the back side of the nursery here, we have the attic, which does not have a special ability other than placing here. It lets you pick first, but you do have to take an extra ghost to go there. You'll continue to run through these different rooms, restocking them once they resolve until the deck of cards runs out at which point you will reveal how many ghosts you have. You'll resolve your different sets that say at game end and do the ability that's listed down there below. Uh, whoever has the most ghosts will, as I mentioned, gain extra curses uh, at one curse for every two ghosts. And then whoever has the fewest curses is going to be the winner of the game. And that is how you play Don't Go In There. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this particular game. And we're back, and now we're going to share our thoughts on Don't Go In There from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. So, Sam, first impressions, what did you think of this one? I mean, this is definitely one of the coolest boxes. We have. It, it is I pretty really, cool. I, I and, just think that's... And it's so simple. And you know what? It fits with Road to Infamy because they, as most people know, have done Canvas, which is hanging on our yeah. wall. It's behind the camera right they here. Just, that thought process, I don't think I would have so ever thought about So they that. are keeping true to their uh, tradition, their uniqueness of making the box part of the game in a way. Uh, so yeah, really cool aspect to that. And it looks like a haunted house, so that builds yeah. to the theme of it and everything. Uh, what'd you think of the actual gameplay experience? Um, it was fun. We played it with our friends. We had our annual Halloween party and we played it and it's very thematic. I yeah. Think it, it really sticks with the Halloween theme. Yes. It definitely hit that, 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 uh, touch and it built with the theme, like you're saying. And I like that, the the idea of what you're doing in the game, like I'm, I want to go into the haunted house, but oh, I want to go too far. If that fits, the mechanics of that fit with the theme. It builds on itself, and, and I think we, it's pretty cool. We've had a couple games this year. It, it slightly push your luck. Mm -hmm. um, not as as so much as others can be. Yeah, you're not a, busting in this but game. But it's a form of pushing yeah. your luck. And I do enjoy them. I think if I was to just think about it, I wouldn't say I enjoy those type of games. But when I think about those games that we've played with mm -hmm. that mechanic in it, I do enjoy them. I think it's a really good game to get non-gamers thinking a little bit harder into okay. what needs to be my next move. You're not necessarily penalized for going lower because um, you're still going to get a card. You're still going to get something and you have to learn how to work with that. But trying to figure out, do I want to be that first person and take a ghost mm -hmm. to get the card that I want? Um, or do I want to stay in the middle? Yeah. I, I think that thought process is really good for non-gamers. Yeah, I, I agree with it too, because as we've said, this is push your luck-esque, but not really, yeah. because there's not busting involved in this game. It's really more so your managing of your ghosts. And yeah. if you go too far, you're probably going to take some ghosts, and you don't want to be the person who takes the most, because you're probably not going to win yeah. aspect of this. So. Um, but it's at its heart, it's a set collection game yes. where you're trying to build these different sets of items and those items really bounce off of one another and, and shake the game yeah. up that I don't well, think you really see on the surface. I think a big part game. of this game too, is you do not know what all the items are. Yeah. And that's something you don't, I have not seen in a lot of the other games like this we've played. Usually, you know what yeah. you're aiming for, but 
you don't. You don't know what else could come out. Yeah. The next round, you may not have any black cats, and yeah. you have all these ones that you didn't see before. And I think that really shifts yeah, so it up a little bit. The fact that they're only coming out three at a time does play a big factor in this. And not only that, but if you're committed to this room over here, do you really want to commit yourself to another room yeah. and get more ghosts and, and risk taking on bad dice rolls and, and that sort of thing? It's There's a lot of at play in this game yeah and i'll be honest when i first looked at this game and and read through the rules i didn't know if i would like it or not because it just seemed a little too straightforward and a little too simple but then you get into it and you see how the different sets work they, off of each so other they're so different some don't kick into the end of the round yeah some affect other cards right some and you don't know that at the, the beginning. So you mentioned the black cats. The black cats only help you if you are able to manage your ghosts. Which, which you don't know if you're going to manage your ghosts until the very end which of the I game. Did, because I got a black cat very early on. Uh -huh. And so I was very conscious of how many ghosts I had. Yeah, And same. But I think it hurt me a little bit because then I made some bad choices with my cards because I just didn't want to get ghost. Yeah. When there's other cards out there too, they can eliminate right. your ghost. Right. Yeah. So. There's a lot of ways this game can unfold. And again, on the surface, you'd look at it and you'd think, oh, this is just going to be a rote experience, a, a simple set collection, dice rolling in. Yeah. And, and in a way it is, but it's not because of the way those cards work. Yeah. So, all right, let's get to our pros and cons with Don't Go In There. What were the things that you really liked about this particular game? Um, I really liked the, the, the sets. I think that the variety of them was really nice. It wasn't the same. I liked how many there were. I think some people make that as a con because you might not get what you need, okay. but I feel like there's so many choices out there. Um, and so I really liked that. I thought the, the artwork and the development of all of it was really well done. Yeah, I, I'll agree with you on a number of things that, that you said. I'll start with the last one. You mentioned the artwork in this game. I mean, it fits with Road to Infamy's production value of what they offer to you. Uh, this game, I mean, it hits it out of the park. It feels creepy. You look at some yeah. of the things that are on these cards and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know if I want to pick that up because it's creepy. But it's not bloody and gory either. No, 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 you no, can no. easily play with it's older kids. Yeah, it's spooky kind of creepy yeah. kind of things. Um, like dolls and, and creepy looking yeah. masks. Kind of Nightmare that's Before right. Christmas. Yeah, yes. a little bit like that, yeah. Um, but also, you mentioned the different sets and the number of cards that are in this game. You have a plethora of different types of sets of cards, so much so that you don't play with all of them in each game. You mix them up. And I love that aspect because yeah. it really increases the replayability. And as we've told you, one of the best things about this game are the interacting ways that those sets bounce off of each other. Yeah. So when you have extra sets in this game that you're not even getting to play with until you play the second or a third time, that just increases the yeah. number of times you're going to say, oh, wow, look at how these two things kind of interact with one another. I don't know. It's a really cool aspect yeah. of it. So what about the things that you didn't care for? I don't think there's really anything that just sticks out to me. Um, I think maybe it would be cool if I realize space wise, there's not a lot of room, but each time you're, you do flip the rooms over back and forth. Maybe if there was enough rooms to flip them back and forth and maybe switch them out. Yeah. I don't know. That's not a big con. Yeah. I will say, um, yeah, kind of in the same vein as that. Um, now I granted, I'm not 100% certain what edition we were given to review here. I don't know if this is the retail edition or if it's the Kickstarter edition and there may be extra rooms that might have been available through the Kickstarter as it is. We only had three room boards, double sided. So six rooms in total, but yeah. you, you play with all six of those in a game. But you've, flip them probably you flip them a lot it would be nice to have some more rooms that you could swap out and say yeah. well i want to play with these these set of three rooms this game and you know see how that might change the game up yeah that's one small thing about it uh any others that stick out to you i mean not really that's coming to mind i can't really think of anything as i played that i was thinking i don't like this mm -hmm. I, I feel like it was really well made and and done yeah the only other thing I can possibly think of, and this wasn't maybe even my personal experience, it's something that I observed and wondered if somebody else felt this way. When you're getting a bunch of ghosts, you can sort of feel like, I have no shot. I'm, I've got all these ghosts yeah. and, and I'm going to take the extra curses because of that. So, oh well. 
kind of thing. And that's not going to happen in every game, I don't think. It might happen in a few games where somebody just is unlucky and they're getting bad dice rolls or they're just not playing smart and they've got a ton of ghosts and and it's pretty clear they're not going to win. Um, that can happen in this game. I don't know that that's a huge con because I don't think it's going to happen in every game, but yeah. I think it could happen. All right, scale of 1 to 10, love to hate. Where does Don't Go In There come in at for you? I really like this game. I definitely think it's one that we're going to bring out, not just around Halloween, but it is the perfect Halloween game. Yeah. Um, so I definitely see us playing this more, and I would give it a 7.8. Okay, high, high score there for this one. Um, you know what? I, this game really surprised me. I enjoyed it a whole lot more than I thought I would. I thought it would be a simple experience, pretty straightforward, and it wasn't. It really kind of nailed uh, nailed exactly what it was trying to do with being this spooky haunted house themed set collection, dice rolling game. All in all, I think it's a really cool experience. I'm a 7.6 on this one. I really enjoyed it. So uh, really, we can recommend Don't Go In There. It's the newest game from Road to Infamy Games. Check it out. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think of this one. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.